Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 982 and today we're back for another brand new video and today's video comes on the back of an international break as we set our sights on Dundee United with the hope and dare I say optimism that we will finally start looking like a Rangers side, playing like a Rangers side and actually play our best players that deserve to play whilst dropping the ones that didn't. Haven't we already done this before? That's right people, we have been here before on the back of an international play playing Dundee United with a lot of the same thoughts and feelings that we currently have. Now, there has been a couple months, there has been eight games between it, so there is a very important difference now to where we are and where they are and that's what we're here to discuss. Despite it being the second time we're looking at Dundee United, there's a hell of a lot to break down and discuss both from them and more importantly the Rangers side as well where I have a couple things I would like to ask you guys and hear your thoughts about going in to this weekend. But before we get to the old Rangers then, let's pull it back and have a look at for the second time this season at Dundee United, the newly promoted championship side who, if you remember the last time we went to go ahead and play them on the back of an international break, they were actually undefeated. They were up and cooking coming from the championship. Well, after being handed that 1-0 loss and being handed their first L, it's actually been pretty damn interesting for them and we'll get to that in the next couple minutes as we're here to talk about the Dundee United side who at my current time of recording sit fourth in the league. One spot behind us and only three points the difference maker. Now granted they do have a game in hand but I think if you asked any Dundee United fan on the planet all 13 of them would sit there and look you in the eyes and say yes I would love to be sitting three points behind Rangers. I would love to be sitting in this type of position after 11-12 league games in the old season. Whilst if you asked every single Rangers fan on the planet how they would feel about only three points separating us and Dundee United at third and fourth would probably break down in tears and that shows you just how different football can be. And it's that balancing scale that we're going to try and navigate our way through throughout today's video. But again, we're tipping it on this perspective right now to look at the United side before pulling it back in terms of Rangers. But again, Dundee United fourth, three points behind us, having scored more league goals than us so far this season. I'll let it go right now, but the frustration is already building. And I think the frustration for the United fans were after a fantastic start, after losing to us, it's the way they responded as they had another big game shortly after that, a quarter-final versus Mullerwell where they had a great opportunity, but they went ahead and lost that game going back-to-back -back L's thanks to a 90th minute penalty from young Lennon Miller, a lot of pressure on the young laddie's shoulders, tucked away, no baller, quality is quality, no matter how young or old they are in terms of the football and perspective, but after that loss it then responded kind of with a dramatic and frolling, probably game of the season and ask if you actually want to talk about it especially when it comes to drama but it's not the only time they were involved in drama but this drama was a 3-3 free -free draw with Kilmarnock where Dundee United looked dead and buried at this certain point when it was 3-1 down but they chipped away, they brought it back to 3-2 and then they scored a 99th minute penalty on their own thanks to Ross Graham scoring in the 99th minute to grab them a point and that was a massive reaction, pretty much last kick of the ball, got the fans up picked them up after the loss to us, then the quarter-final, and it did spark them to play a hell of a lot better over the next couple of weeks. As the next game saw them finally get back to winning ways with a hard-fought 1-0 win versus St Mirren, but it's not that game I want to talk about. Nana. Nah, nah, it's the following one from that, as again, the drama was just pouring from this United side's pores as they were getting beat once again, this time, to Hibernian. 2-1 doing uh, that aspect. They scored a 93rd minute equaliser. Pandemonium limbs again. They've done it again. It's just like Kilmarnock. Well, just... Like Kamarak, there was still a thing to be said in the game of football because they won the done and dusty with the 93rd minute. Equaliser. Nah, nah, this squad got themselves back up the park and scored again and again in the 99th minute to win the game. 3-2, that's drama, that's attacking football, that's excitement. By God, it must be nice. And I'm sitting here being jealous of United fans getting to celebrate goals and that. What's happened? 
to my team. I'll let it go as they did follow up their next game of a 1-0 loss to Aberdeen, which is pretty sober and not only for them, but of course, us as well as we know what that's like to lose up at Petaudry. And again, it was more late drama from this Dundee United perspective as they conceded a goal this time in the 84th minute of the game. If you're starting to notice a pattern right now, yeah, you're not miles away from here. Every game that Dundee United pretty much plays has a late goal drama in it. There's something that happens in the last 15 minutes that seems to bring all eyes on them. It does make them must watch. It does make them very exciting, if you will. But as a Rangers fan who just wants a free point up the road, it's nice and easy game. A football after the international break. It's certainly given me a couple things to think about as again, this United side's never out the game and they usually are involved. But the word familiar sums up where we're going to go next over the next 30 seconds as what happened after that 1-0 loss to Aberdeen, just like the 1-0 loss versus us, they went ahead to play a Mullerwell side and guess what the scoreline was in that game of football? That's right, 10 points to Gryffindor. It is of course 2-1 to Mullerwell. Symmetry in that aspect. Then, however, they did go against Hibernian once again so far this season and again they provided that late goal drama as Dundee United scored another 90th minute penalty to bring that game back and scrapped and grab a point from the Edinburgh side, which is always enjoyable to see, but that is it in terms of their story until their most recent game of football that saw maybe their most controlled, most dominant game of the season where they didn't even allow Ross County to have a single sniff in terms of a shot on target as Dundee United battered Ross County to the scoreline of Dundee United 3, Ross County 0. And Danny worry, if you are starved and it's been about 42 seconds since we mentioned a 90th minute goal for Dundee United well don't worry I can supply one right here as they scored yet again in the 90th minute this time in the 92nd to score their third goal of the game and that is the story of Dundee United ladies and gentlemen that is how they've been performing that is how they've been playing they've came up for the championship no buying into the part the bus mentality they've brought in some talent yes they're spending a wee bit more than maybe your average champion, championship side in terms of the wages but they're going about playing the right way they're getting the ball forwards they're playing to their strengths they know they've got pace and trickery on the wing position and they know that their big three centre halves that are when are all able to play are hand fills both not only when they're defending in set pieces but when they're bombing forward as well with the set pieces and free kicks long throws whatever you want it's no pretty in any aspect of that but what it is is effective they know who they are they know their strengths they know their best players and they're simply just playing to it football can be a really simple game when you didn't overcomplicate it with daft stats and statistics the only other thing I want to say before I wrap up the United perspective is of course Ross Graham who some of you have already mentioned a couple of times in their first preview he's a standout centre back for them really strong really powerful quick as well and a ground has an eye for goal, we've already mentioned him in this video as well for scoring yet again. He is listed as a doubt for this game, which will be a big boost for us as he is a big handful and a big pain in the old arse, as is Lewis Moult as well, or Louis Moult, whatever you want to call him, as he is also listed as a doubt who we know from a past can score a goal versus Rangers, and if you give him a half opportunity, he's one of those classic goal scorers that puts the ball into the back in it if he gets the service, and I think that's going to be the challenge, just tidying up the back line, no, no doing anything silly, and not feeding and playing into their hands by giving them cheap free kicks, giving them set pieces to flood the box and make it as difficult as they can do. But again, as we said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a drama-filled side. This is a side that scores so many goals. It's involved in pretty much every game, has a late goal in it, either for them or against them. Red cards, drama. This is a side that drags and makes the game is difficult all the way through if you didn't put them to bed and not many's put them to bed this even season even we didn't when we beat them previously it was still a slog it was still hard to break down and I'm sure that's what they'll be trying to do as they come to Ibrox and try to play against that crowd that's obviously going to be nervous because we have absolutely no idea what we're actually going to see we're probably going to be gut punched when we see the starting 11 so I it's a very very dangerous side to come up and play it coming on the back of an international break and as I said I just want a three points easy up the road but everyone suggests 
from the, the way they play and go about their business and their success they're having late in games, it certainly won't be as easy as a lot of us hope it will be. But again, ladies and gentlemen, they will only get from this game what we allow them to get, and that means we need to move away from the Dundee United perspective and get to the old Rangers side. And as we alluded to during the intro, and as we've alluded to throughout a lot of this season, there is a certain sense of familiarity regarding how we're feeling, especially with the symmetry of coming back from the international break and playing Dundee United. You know what I mean? We were promised this, we were promised the world, we were going to be better in November, we were going to be looking at, we were going to be playing the project players, we were going to be building up, we just had to give these guys times. Well, now it's the second time we're against Dundee United on the back of an international break. Are we finally going to get to see us playing at our best because to me we've failed in the aspect and we have not delivered in terms of project or the project or building up players and getting them comfortable so we're stronger when we start playing the exact same teams again and again we are still the exact same side we were two months ago when we last played Dundee United when we were promised we'd be different we would look different we would play different with Denny at all and I think that is going to be the biggest talking point ahead of this game of football because again Claremont has said to us we would be a, we would look a better sign we were to judge him based on November while well, he's running out of time now to finally show us what the stranger side can actually be it's a familiar foe we'll beat them all the stuff you want to say in the world what actually matters is how we go about our business and play and again the managers got to pick the right 11 to go ahead and do that, you know what I mean, and I'm almost getting sick of the negativity all the time, you know what I mean, regarding the players, and I know obviously I've had to have my part in that as well, I think our most recent upload was also me upset about the way we're working off the part, but this is about on the part, right, people talk about this team like it's absolute garbage, and look, I know it's not been great or anything, but there is players there, they're just no getting played, I mean we're talking about guys that's just played well in the, in the, Nash, in the Nations League, we've got the likes of Barami, Cherny's played there, we've had guys like Hadji scoring yet another goal for his country during the last couple of weeks, we've got guys there that can actually play football, it's actually finding ways to get them into the game and that's how I feel, there is toys there to be played with, you've even got the likes of Redvan back, you're having the likes of Oscar Cortez back now, you've got the likes of Danilo back now who's had not only another two weeks to get fit, but he's been bled in the last couple of games so he should be ready to go we didn't need to keep just battering the fans down and strangling the fans down every bit of hope and every bit of optimism by shoveling down the same crap down our throats and telling us that it tastes different we're no daft anymore there's good players in the squad go ahead and play them and look there might be a right back discussion here about the likes of Tavernier come in but honestly I didn't really want to get the ah I got you or he gets a goal that doesn't bother me you know what I mean I'm not a child that doesn't excite me I mean oh look Tavernier scored one goal yay you know I didn't care about that. I want to see the squad moving forward I want to see the squad progressing in a time and I know Casuero has picked up a, a knock on the international duty I don't know the depths of this injury if I'm being brutally honest with you because I'm actually filming this 24 hours in advance because I'm taking the missus away for her birthday, her 30th birthday, so I'll be back just in time for the game of football. It will be a car vlog, I'll film it for where we actually are, but obviously we're leaving normally when I do film the video, so I'm not going to get to see the press conference, but it certainly didn't look good, and if he is ruled out, obviously that does open the door for Tavernier, but I ask you, should it, ladies and gentlemen? And I know this is a familiar talking point as well, but Sterling's there. It should be Sterling coming in. Some people say, oh, well, he can't play the full 90. Well, neither can Tavernier. You know what I mean? And I ask anybody who's actually watching today's video, say we're needing a goal, because we usually are, because we play pretty bad stuff these days, right? You're needing a goal in the last 15, 20 minutes. Who do you want on the right-hand side trotting off the old bench? Do you want it to be Sterling, who's more defensive than offensive? Or would you look here and see Tavernier come on and say, you know what? The skipper's got a goal or assist in him now. And again, he will be running at tire legs. He won't be exposed too badly. I think that's actually a more suitable substitution now for where we are as a team. This Sterling coming on with 15, 20 minutes to try and win games, that doesn't make any sense to me. He's defensive. You keep him in to put us in a position to win it. And then if we need to go ahead and try and win it, we should be bringing in Tavernier. And I know people say, ah, well, we might need to be shutting up shot 15 minutes and that. And see that mentality. Please just drop it. This is Rangers. We're at Ibrox. Why are we starting to talk like fourth and fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth sides in Scottish football? Is that where our standards are drawn? We're needing to bring on four right back, three right back, 
back two CDMs, three other centre half to try and hold on to games and limp pair games. Is that where we're devolving to? Is that the standards we're willing to accept anymore? We need to just get rid of that mentality at all. It's not an excuse, ladies and gentlemen. Sterling's got to be on the bench in case we want to suit things up and tidy things up at the end and make sure we get in the line. That's, that's a terrible mentality to have, especially for a side the likes a Rangers and the standards that was previously set here in the past. I think you start with your best players and if you need the goal of that, I'd rather be turning to the likes of Tavernier than the likes of Sterling right now with Castleweir obviously being possibly on the shelf but that's how I'm feeling going into this game there is so much negativity there is so much frustration there is so much stuff getting said but at the same time as ladies and gentlemen he has got a lot of players back now there is players playing there. There is Hadji scored again, as we've already mentioned. And I'm sure he's playing really well. Danilo's there. You've got Eggerman there. It doesn't need to be the same familiar failures. It can be different. But the only man that can make the change is Clement and Willie. Unfortunately, I think we all know the answer. And it will be Tav. And it will be Dessers because, again, we've got a manager that's more want to stick it to people being criticism and being stubborn rather than putting the side actual first. And, look, I hope it is four and a half to Rangers more. I hope Tavernier's got a hat trick and Dessers assisted them more. Vice versa. I love it, ladies and gentlemen. But it doesn't move this club forward and I do think when I think back to two months ago and everyone we were told and Lennon in the national break and said impressors and said about this what would be like later on what would it be like in November we're the same ladies and gentlemen we'll be told the same and why stubbornness ah, I gotcha do you know feel daft now I didn't need any of that as I've already mentioned ladies and gentlemen but again I will be hopeful that now that he's got a lot more toys to pick off I know it might be too early for Cortez and stuff like that but Danilo's there you put them in there and you build because if you can't start them at Ibrox versus a newly promoted Dundee United side then what the hell are they doing at the football club why are we giving guys contract extensions to the likes of Sterling if it's no for games to start like this the future and that's how I'm feeling. I just need Sahan. I need a good start in the living. I need a good performance. I need a good game of football just to give us something to get behind and get excited by rather than the same limping style of football we've seen over our last couple of home games versus two of the worst sides statistically in the league this season. Both Hearts and Hibernian. It's both been dug meat to actually watch. We didn't need that anymore. I'd like to see a performance and again the players are there that I think could go out there and give you it because again they'll be boosted by actually getting to start rather than getting trotted on the bench and get bombed out the next again week for people that are not performing just inject this squad that badly needs an ejection and for me when you step back and look at all the players that's sitting there in the 18 and the 24 that's dying to play go ahead and give them a chance. It can't be worse than what we've been seeing over the last couple months. We sit fourth in the league. We're nine points behind Aberdeen. We've been outscored by not only a newly promoted championship side, but several teams in the league. We have the exact same form over our last five league matches to the likes in Mullerwell. It cannot get worse than this. So provide us with something put foundations into place, but I know I've probably already said all this before, but that's just how I feel again, ladies and gentlemen. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. And despite everything I've said, I'm seeing a Rangers 3-1 one win in this game of football. I don't know why. I certainly want to suggest that many goals because we're not scoring many goals this season, but 3-1 in that aspect. That's what I'm going to hope for. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the old comment section below. And as always, I've been CJ 92 Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.